God has designed a midnight for your child as much as you love your child. And you come running there rescue and every time they go through, every time they go through something, you there to see them through it. Then you are not helping them at all. You are blocking the thing that God has set up for them to make them strong. I know it's tough. I know it's hard to watch them go through. But honey, you have to let them bump their head every now and then so that they can become full grown adults who know how to handle anything, who can stand up on their feet. Your job is not to keep them from, from the cradle to the grave. Your job is to keep them from the cradle, let them grow up and figure out how the hell they're going to get to the grave they sell. See, it is important to be mindful of the words that we use to our, our friends, our families, our loved ones and strangers. Because sticks and stones can break our bones, but words can break our hearts. God has designed a midnight for everybody on this earth to go through. He has designed it. He didn't allow, he didn't make it happen, but he allows it to happen. All right? And the reason for that midnight for you to go through it is not to destroy you. It is to make you stronger and make you better. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So you're not supposed to despise it. You're just supposed to walk on through it. Now, if God has designed a midnight for your child as much as you love your child, and you come running there rescue, and every time they go through, every time they go through something, you there to see them through it, then you are not helping them at all. You are blocking the thing that God has set up for them to make them strong. I don't think you're following me. I'm following you. Let me break it down to you this way. If God has designed something for them to go through that's going to make them stronger, and every time they go through it, they, they, they can come to you and get it, then what do they need God for? Yeah. You become their God. Do you understand? And what you need to know about him, he's a jealous God, and he will have no other gods before him. Do you hear me? I know, it's, I know it hurts to have your child go through something. I know it's tough. I know it's hard to watch them go through. But honey, you have to let them bump their head every now and then so that they can become full grown adults who know how to handle anything, who can stand up on their feet. Your job is not to keep them from, from the cradle to the grave. Your job is to keep them from the cradle, let them grow up and figure out how the hell they're going to get to the grave they self. Do you understand? Mm. I never thought about you it You ain't like been that. thinking about much is all I'm going to tell you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? You I understand. Got to let, let your children grow up. And as long as I'm on this subject, I'm going to go and say this because I think it just needs to be said. What? All of y'all who got these grown children living in your house, I got four words for you. Put that ass out. I don't understand that. Now, now, I'm not talking about all of them. Because, see, that's what, listen, if you're going through something and you have a little financial trouble or you're going through a divorce or things are tough right now, you need to go home for a while. That's what family is for. That's right. To be there for you. Mm -hmm. For a little while. For a little while. Yeah, because yeah, when you come back to my house, I'm like a landlord. I want a move in date and I want to move the hell out date too. <laughs> and don't come up in there talking about you need a week when you know you need six months trying to fool me. Because if you tell me you need a week on the seventh day, I'm a rest. <laughs> And on the eighth day, I'm going to pack you the hell up out of there is all I'm saying. <laughs> you understand what I'm telling you? I understand this. Because the thing about it is this. I'm not talking about them children. I'm talking about them 40-year-olds that's living in your basement. Yes. Talking about, Mama, can I borrow your car? Mm -hmm. Hell no, you can't borrow my car. You 40 years old. <laughs> but a lot of parents done empower them. Then they wonder why all the other grown children are mad. Because you got the same child keep coming back to the house over and over again. You keep these supposed to be the best years of your life, and you letting this child come in and ruin that moment for you. That's crazy as hell. I don't understand. Put them out. Put them out. It's like an eagle. Huh. You know what an eagle do? I love, I love nature. See, God teaches us through nature. This is what an eagle do. When the poor eagle have a little chick chickies, uh -huh. eagle make a nest out of thorns. Why do that? Yeah, so, so when the babies come, they, they take the feathers and they put it down on top of the thorns so they're comfortable. So when the babies come, they're so comfortable. But when the babies stay too long, the eagle fans the feathers. So all that's left in the nest is thorns. So no matter which way the little eagle in there go, they can't get comfortable. And if they still won't leave, she take them and she throw them out the nest. What? Yes, she do. And watch them. They be flapping and flapping. Then right before they hit the ground, she go in and swoop down, pick them up, and bring them back up. You understand? Did she take back up? Do she go in there and put some more feathers? Hell no. You know what she do? She kick them out again. And they go to flapping and flapping and flapping. She run down and catch them. By the third time she do that, they flying on their own. Do you understand? Mm. Sometime, honey, you just got to make it uncomfortable for your child to get the hell up out of your house. 
take the feathers out the nest. Start with the television and work your way to the PlayStation. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm getting? That's good. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this daughter of yours. You got two of them. The one that's on them drugs. Mm-hmm. I've never met one child in this whole life that said, I want to be... You ask a child what they want to be. They say, a doctor, a lawyer. They, they, they never say, I want to be a drug addict. Mm-mm. Something happens to people in their life. That's why you can never judge nobody. Because something happens that make people go in certain directions. And wherever it happens, if you can take them back to that point, you can take them to the healing. But you got to figure out how to get them back to where they went off track. Do you understand? Yeah. Every time there's a train derailment, they want to know where the incident happened. You got to take them back to the incident to make them heal. Hmm. Talk to your daughter, Kyle. Don't judge her. Now, she's going to lie. I know. Yeah, yeah, a crackhead a lie with the truth to do. <laughs> but you talk to her. See, there is a story of a major league baseball player who's speaking to inmates in prison. One of the inmates asks him, How did you become a professional ball player, sir? To which he says, you know, I think it started when I was a boy. I would play catch with my dad and he would always say, you you, you keep throwing the ball like that, son, and you'll end up in the major leagues one day. You keep swinging the bat like that, son, and you'll end up in the major leagues one day. And here I am, a professional ball player. The room became quiet. And the inmate who asked the question, he said, you know, the same thing happened to me. When I was a boy, my father told me that I was good for nothing. And that one day, I would end up in prison. And here I am. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me wrong. See, words can cut deeper and fester longer than any sword known to man. I still haven't forgotten what they told me as a kid, the the, the teasing, the insecurities that it created, have you? Consider the story of a little girl. She's in the grocery store with her mother and she drops a, a bottle of milk onto the floor, breaking it. The mother says, you stupid child, why did you do that? Consider the story of another little girl who's in the grocery store with her mother. She drops a bottle of milk onto the ground, breaking it. And this mother says, that was a very stupid thing you did. Which child do you think will grow up to have a healthier self-image and more self-confidence? The one who was was called stupid or the one whose action was called stupid? See, it is important to be mindful of the words that we use to our our friends, our families, our loved ones, and strangers. Because sticks and stones can break our bones, but words can break our hearts. And if we're not careful, it can shatter our dreams. A great parent is the one who gives attention. To be a great parent, all you need to do is be present with your child. Not give presents, be present. That's all kids really want. They want you to notice them, to be loved, to be wanted. The best parent is the one whose eyes light up when their child enters the room. The parent who makes a promise to love unconditionally. The parent who leads by example. Not by what you say, but by what you do. Kids will never pay attention to your words. They will always and only pay attention to your actions and your intentions. A great parent works on themselves. A great parent makes their own mind strong, knowing their kids will likely follow in their footsteps. Heal yourself. Make your own mind strong so your children can see the clearest example of what a great life looks like. Setting a clear and strong example of what type of human being you want your kids to become starts with you. It's up to you to set the example of kindness and compassion toward others. To set the example of what it is like to be yourself. To set the example of living a magical life that you choose. That's what a great parent does. Set their child free. Allow them to be themselves. Allow them to make their own decisions. Live your life in such a way that when your kids think of kindness, compassion, strength, authenticity, 
and real joy, they think of you. A great parent knows not to allow anything in their life they don't want their children to reproduce in their lives. That includes toxic relationships. That includes bad habits. That includes making decisions based on fear. A great parent listens. They don't lecture. A great parent supports, never shames. A great parent guides and sets free. Being a parent is not a job. It's a privilege. Being a parent is not a burden. It's a blessing. They are always watching. What kind of role model will you be for your children?